In Sun Tzu's writings, heaven refers to timing or opportune moments. Literally, it encompasses the natural elements such as yin and yang, cold and heat, and the seasons, which are unrelated to human factors. Essentially, Sun Tzu is referring to military meteorology. In the era of ancient warfare, weather conditions directly influenced the effectiveness of battles and ultimately determined the outcome of wars. Taking the twelfth chapter, The Attack by Fire, in The Art of War, as an example, the role of heaven becomes even more significant when fire is used as a weapon. Sun Tzu teaches us that, timing is crucial, when it comes to employing fire. Here, timing, doesn't refer to specific hours, but rather the opportune moments throughout the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Sun Tzu states, timing depends on the dryness of the weather, indicating that a dry climate is suitable for employing fire attack strategies. Therefore, you should utilize fire tactics at the appropriate timing, such as during the winter or spring seasons. However, during the summer, considering the rainy climate, it would not be advisable to use fire attacks. Even if the fire is ignited, a heavy downpour could extinguish it, rendering the fire attack meaningless. Next, let's talk about the aspect of wind. How did ancient generals determine the direction of the wind? In ancient China, military commanders typically had a position known as the Feng Jiao. Although the term Feng Jiao may be unfamiliar to modern people, we are likely familiar with their responsibilities. In modern terms, they can be considered meteorologists who specialize in studying wind direction and providing detailed information to the commanding officers. Sun Tzu mentioned, start a fire upwind, do not attack downwind. This means that it is feasible to ignite a fire in an upwind position, but one should never use fire in a downwind position. If you use fire in a downwind position, it would be like setting yourself on fire. The attack by fire teaches us to observe changes in the weather. If you decide to employ a fire attack as a strategy and plan to launch an offensive from east to west, you must have an east wind blowing. If the wind is blowing from the west, you will end up harming yourself. However, during the course of a battle, the wind direction can change. What should you do if the east wind suddenly shifts to a west wind? This would have the opposite effect. The battle is not yet over and the enemy ultimately turns the tide and emerges victorious, while you transition from victory to defeat. Therefore, observing the wind direction is of utmost importance. Let me tell you a real battle example. During the late Sui dynasty in China, there was a peasant uprising leader named Liu Yuanjin. He led a peasant army and advanced to the city of Yenling. The emperor of the Sui dynasty dispatched Wang Shichong to suppress Liu Yuanjin. According to historical records, Wang Shichong was handsome in appearance but possessed all the traits of a despicable person. Despite his poor historical reputation, his abilities cannot be underestimated. Originally a civil servant, he had a strong interest in studying military strategies, which eventually led him to become a renowned general. One of the skills he mastered was observing wind direction. On the night before the two sides were preparing to engage in battle, Wang Shichong received a report from his reconnaissance troops that Liu Yuanjin was planning to use a fire attack. He looked up at the sky, observing the moon and the wind direction, and smiled slightly. He then ordered his entire army to hold their positions and not act rashly when the enemy launched the fire attack. Any violators of his orders would be executed by beheading. The next day, the battle began, and Liu Yuanjin's army rushed to the gates of Wang Shichong's camp. However, the Sui army was already well prepared, firmly defending their position. Liu Yuanjin's army struggled to break through the Sui army's defense line. During the time when Liu Yuanjin initiated the fire attack, something unexpected happened, the wind direction suddenly changed, and the favorable wind turned into a headwind. In that instant, 
Liu Yuanjin's army was engulfed by the flames, with countless soldiers trapped in the raging fire, meeting a tragic fate. Seizing the opportunity, Wang Shichong launched a counterattack, ultimately leading to the defeat of Liu Yuanjin's army, and Liu Yuanjin himself perished in the battle. This battle example tells us the importance of observing wind direction. Wang Shichong, through his precise observation of wind direction, learned that the enemy was about to launch a fire attack and made the correct response. The change in wind direction caused Liu Yuanjin's fire attack plan to fail completely, giving Wang Shichong an opportunity to counterattack and ultimately leading to the destruction of Liu Yuanjin's army. This story fully demonstrates the significant impact of weather factors on combat decision-making in warfare. We need to recognize that although the weather can be unpredictable, there are often signs of its changes. Therefore, we need to have a forward-thinking mindset when understanding and studying issues. Our current favorable situation does not guarantee the same in the future, and our current barely manageable situation does not mean it will continue to be so. If we can anticipate changes in the environment in advance, we can be prepared and not have to resort to last-minute measures. While we can also remedy problems after they occur, it often comes at a higher cost. Why not be smarter in the first place? Therefore, the principles of Sun Tzu's art of war are still highly relevant to us today. For example, we can only recognize and utilize the objective environment but cannot artificially change it, we must learn to adapt to the environment. This means observing, understanding, and utilizing the current environmental conditions instead of trying to forcefully change them. Only by adapting to the environment can we better cope with challenges and changes and achieve success. The wisdom of Sun Tzu's art of war can still guide us to achieve outstanding results in various fields today. For example, the current business operations are vastly different from decades ago. Factors such as the liberalization of financial currency, aging population structure, and the digitalization of international trade have had profound impacts on business. The traditional, front store, back factory, business model can no longer compare to the mature e-commerce models of today. With the rise of the AI field, companies like Nvidia have become giants with a market value of trillions, thanks to their success in the AI domain. The world situation has changed, and business models have inevitably changed as well. If you can foresee this issue in advance, you have the opportunity to become a winner in business competition. However, if you fail to see these changes, you will face the risk of being eliminated. When everyone is competing for a share of the social wealth, being late to the game could make you a loser, which means losing everything and even facing the danger of bankruptcy. Understanding and adapting to environmental changes are crucial in business competition. We cannot cling to rigid plans, instead, we need to adjust our strategies and actions based on factors such as the market, competitors, and technological developments. In his first chapter, Sun Tzu emphasized an important principle, calculate the advantages to be derived from certain actions, and then make a move that will exploit these advantages. This means that once we have made a decision, we need to adjust our strategies according to changes in the environment to create favorable conditions for our actions. This is what Sun Tzu repeatedly emphasizes as momentum. Momentum is the complement of the power of an army, making its movements possible in harmony with the external situation. When implementing decisions, we need to seize opportunities and effectively respond to challenges. We need to maintain flexibility and agility in business competition, making good use of our strengths and advantages to achieve better results. In conclusion, the concept of heaven in Sun Tzu's Art of War reveals the impact of environmental factors on warfare and business operations, reminding us of the importance of foresight. The video is coming to a close, and in the next video, I will explore the importance of Earth and strategic thinking regarding Earth in Sun Tzu's Art of War. Earth also play a crucial role in warfare, 
and Sun Tzu dedicates two chapters, Terrain, and Nine Grounds, specifically discussing his strategic thinking on Earth. Interpreting Sun Tzu's strategic thoughts on Earth is of significant guiding significance to us today. If you want to learn more about the fascinating aspects of Sun Tzu's art of war and explore the application of warfare strategies in different fields, remember to subscribe to my channel. I will continue to bring you more interesting videos and in-depth discussions. Thank you all for watching and supporting. See you next time.